What's going on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, November 1st, and it is a beautiful fall evening here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to show you three big mistakes that gardeners often make growing citrus. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications. And check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. The first and biggest mistake that most gardeners are making growing growing citrus is that they are not fertilizing them properly and at the right times of the year. That's because citrus is very different than most of the fruit trees that we are used to growing in the United States and most of the northern hemisphere in general, and they need to be treated differently. Most of us are used to growing fruit trees like apples, peaches, pears, plums, blueberries, figs, and they all have one thing in common. They are deciduous fruit trees. They go completely dormant in the wintertime, roughly from November to March. So most of us are used to fertilizing our fruit trees only up until late summer because the fruit trees then go into a long period of dormancy. So because most of our fruit trees go into a dormant period from November to March, they're using next to no nutrients in that period. So the last fertilizing that you gave them back in late summer, they're still holding on to all of those nutrients internally and in their roots and in the soil. So when these fruit trees begin to wake up during spring, they have all of those nutrients stored and banked within them. So they're ready to spring into action. Citrus trees, on the other hand, are evergreen trees that grow all year round. They have no dormancy period. In fact, to make things even worse, citrus, for the most part, ripen their fruits in late fall and winter. So they demand the highest levels of fertilizing during that time. So if you're a gardener that is fertilizing your citrus trees like you are most of your deciduous fruit trees, where you stop fertilizing them in late summer, they are burning through all of their nutrients all fall and winter trying to ripen the fruits and continue growing. So when your citrus trees try to bud out and flower again in the spring, they're going to be completely depleted because they spent the last several months actively growing, ripening their fruits and burning through all of that leftover fertilizer and they were never topped off. This will cause poor flowering and fruit set and reduced yields. For that reason, it is very important that you fertilize your citrus trees in ground on a rotating three month schedule. I like to fertilize them every single season. So every three months, I'll put down compost and mulch and a few handfuls or a couple of cups of organic 555 or similar fertilizer, some type of organic fertilizer where all N, P, and K are represented close to being balanced. This will make sure that you are constantly feeding your trees and they will maintain high levels of nutrients throughout the fall and the winter while they're ripening their crops so they are ready to rock it and spring to life in the spring and put out those new blooms and fruits. This mistake can be an even bigger problem if you're growing citrus in containers. That's because your citrus in containers is limited to the small amount of nutrients that will fit into the container itself. They don't have roots that can search the earth for more nutrients if they're not being fed properly. They will simply wither away and perform very poorly. So I'm going to link to a video above that is a complete guide for fertilizing citrus trees in containers. You need to follow this method all throughout the year on the same schedule. You should not back off in the fall or winter time. Treat every month exactly the same. The second mistake that many gardeners make growing citrus is they don't effectively tip prune their citrus trees. Now, everybody knows that it's important to prune your fruit trees, that every single year you should remove any dead or diseased branches, and you should also prune them as necessary to manage the size but you also need to prune your fruit trees properly in order to encourage good fruiting. What do I mean by that? In order for any fruit tree to do well, you have to have a constant supply of new fruit wood. Here you can see where I pruned my citrus tree right here. This is my Meyer lemon. This wood down here is the old wood. This wood has already fruited and it won't fruit anymore. So I needed to cut the wood right here to encourage more branching because where you make the cuts, that is where the growth hormone is going to collect to encourage new branching. So instead of maintaining this old wood down here that is never going to fruit for me again, I had to cut it back and now that's going to be used as structural scaffolding wood. And then out of that, all of this new growth this is new wood that is going to fruit for me the next year. So by simply cutting this one branch, I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven different pieces of fruit wood. And that is how you go ahead and encourage yields. A lot of gardeners are afraid to prune their fruit trees because they think that the pruning actually hurts the tree. But the exact opposite is true. The pruning actually stimulates new growth and the growth of new fruit wood, which will turn into higher yields because you'll have more fruiting wood. It's that simple. In fact, every year you should be cutting your fruit trees back roughly about 25 to 33 percent of the volume of the tree. That is one quarter to one third of the volume of the tree. So you need to strike a balance between pruning enough that you stimulate growth, but not over pruning so much that you can stress the tree. You don't want to annihilate the tree and cut it down to less than half unless you absolutely have to, like I have to do with my avocado tree over here because I have to fit it underneath this hoop structure in order for it to actually survive the winters here. So barring an exception where you have to protect the tree for certain means, you only want to cut it back about a quarter to a third of its overall volume each season. If you want to know when to prune your citrus trees, that is going to depend on the variety of citrus that you're growing. Varieties of citrus, like these satsumas, they ripen in mid to late fall. So it makes it very easy for you to harvest all of these fruits around Thanksgiving, maybe in early December, and then come through and give the tree a nice haircut sometime in December. That will give it plenty of time to recover from the pruning stress and start developing more budwood before it wants to flower in the spring. Trees like this blood orange right here is a little trickier because this fruit doesn't ripen for me until late February, early March. And then it wants to flower again, usually in late April, early May. So I don't want to come through at the end of March and necessarily give this tree a huge haircut because if I do, I can remove a lot of that fruiting wood that was about to bloom a mere six weeks or so later. So what I like to do for trees like this is intermittently shape it throughout the year. Right after I'm done the hard I'll give it a light pruning. I'll give it another light pruning in the summer, maybe in early fall, and I'll routinely prune off any dead or diseased branches uh, as they appear. As you can see right here, I have a, a dead branch that I need to remove. So inspect trees like this regularly and just stay on top of them. Trees like this key lime right here, this doesn't flower and fruit seasonally. It kind of has its own ever-bearing pattern where it will flower and fruit continuously throughout the year. And right now it's dropping key limes all over the place. So what I'll do for this tree is, as soon as it's done with, uh, with the harvest and it doesn't have any fruit on it anymore, I'll then reshape it and fertilize it and wait again for its next fruiting cycle. And the third mistake that many growers are making growing citrus is they aren't appropriately thinning their fruit, especially on younger trees. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the majority of citrus trees that we buy are grafted fruit trees. So what they'll do is they'll take a one or two year old seed grown rootstock and they will graft fruiting wood from a known variety that may be 20 years old. It's in the peak of its fruiting. So then when the graft takes that very next year, that tree usually tries to fruit because as far as the tree knows, it's 20 years old. It doesn't realize that it's on this little tiny rootstock on little tiny roots and it's not able to handle the giant fruit load of a 30 foot tall orange tree. And as a result, citrus has a nasty habit of overbearing. So if you let your young citrus trees overbear too much, the fruit will be small. It will be inferior quality. It may not ripen in time because the tree won't have the energy to actually ripen the fruit. It may break branches off the tree because it's too much for the young branches to hold, or even worse, it can throw the tree into an alternate bearing cycle. Alternate bearing cycles is when a fruit tree overbears fruit so much that it exhausts all the energy of that tree and it takes more than a year to recover. And when your tree overfruits one year, what may happen next year is it may not produce any fruit at all or only a small handful of fruit. And that happened to me with this very tree when it was a lot younger. When it was only on its second season in ground, it produced over 30 pounds of oranges. It was loaded up like crazy. And as a result, it was so much stress on the tree that last year it only fruited on the one side of the tree and the other half was completely barren because I let it over fruit. Because it went through an alternate bearing season last year and the tree is settling down and it's older now, it's finally starting to fruit more evenly and I'm getting these beautiful 
wonderful, perfectly shaped, perfect looking satsumas on them. So this tends to go away more as the tree gets older. However, if you want more consistent fruiting patterns, it's a good idea to remove some of the fruit. Even when your tree is mature, there are a lot of benefits to fruiting, especially with things like apples and peach and plum trees, because they tend to overbear so much that the fruit may not ripen at all, or they'll be so small, they'll be unattractive and not taste very good. So thin, thin, thin. And that right there are the three biggest mistakes that most gardeners make when growing citrus. Make sure that you fertilize them all throughout the year. Make sure that you prune them enough to encourage the formation of new fruiting wood. And make sure you manage the fruiting, especially on younger trees. Thin that fruit so they don't overbear. If you do all three of those things, you will have much more consistent and earlier and more successful harvests. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden in general, they are all linked down in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. So expand that video description and click on the Amazon storefront link to see everything I use in real life. While you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Hey Dale, you're not going to believe it. Look, it's almost November and there's still a gator in the pond over there. Look at that gator. Look how big he is. And he's just swimming along, minding his own business. That's so cool. He's right there. This is pretty late to see a gator in the pond. What do you think, buddy? You see that big boy over there? Boy, I sure hope he's not hungry. I sure hope he has plenty of food in his belly, just like Dale. <laughs>